Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert PTE teachers here at e2language.com. What we're going to do in this live class is we're going to look in depth at PT reading multiple choice choose multiple answers, which I personally think is the toughest reading task in the PTE. It's certainly very, very tricky. Okay, so we're gonna look at it in depth. I'm gonna show you a method, we're gonna do some practice, we're gonna do all sorts of stuff. Now, if you're in a hurry because test day is coming up or perhaps you don't wanna watch a lengthy methods lesson because your English is already very good, you might wanna check out our express methods lessons on e2language.com. So if you sign up, you'll get full access to all 20 express methods lessons that are short, sharp, and powerful. Otherwise, stick around, this is gonna be a good lesson. All right, so more specifically, what we're going to look at or what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to describe this task to you in depth. I'm gonna tell you really what you have to do. Then I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step method that will make it much easier on test day because you'll have a path through this tricky task. Finally, I'm gonna let you practice on your own under timed conditions with a bit of pressure and you'll get to utilize that method and you'll see how good it is, okay? Right, so let's get straight to the description. So on test day, you're going to see something that looks like this. This is multiple choice, choose multiple answers. The first thing that you should notice is that there are square box answer options. Now, the reason I say this is the first reading task of, PT, of the PT is multiple choice to single answer, which has circular little radio buttons that you select, right? Where you can select one. Now, it doesn't tell you when it's transitioned from multiple choice to single answer to multiple choice to multiple answers, and they look almost identical. When I took my test on, uh, when I did the actual PT, I wasn't quite sure whether I'd screwed it up because I thought I was still on multiple choice choose single answer. So the key here is if you do see those little squares, you do know that you need to select more than one answer option, okay? Because more than one answer option will be correct. Maybe two, maybe three, possibly even four will be correct, okay? But you need to be careful because there is negative marking in this task. So let me explain to you the negative marking very, very simply. Imagine that there are four answer options. Imagine that A, B, C, and D are the answer options, okay? And imagine that A and B are the correct answer options. So let's run through this scoring here. Just let me get out my, my red pen. Okay, so you select A, good work. You get one point. You can just select one and that's fine. Or you select B, fine. You can walk away with one point or 50%, that's fine. But the real ticket here is that you select A and B, which is two points because that's the golden ticket. That's what you want. You select A and B, you get two points, fabulous. Let's say though you select A and C. So here we got one point, but here we got minus one point. So we got zero points, okay? This is how negative marking works. Let's say you choose A, B, that's one plus one, minus one, because C is wrong. But you get two minus one, you'll get one point, okay? That's not too bad. You had a good crack there. If you select all of them, you'll get zero points and the mark doesn't go below zero. Zero is like the bare minimum. It doesn't go to negative one or negative two, okay? But the key here is you obviously wanna try and select all the correct answers, but you can be cautious and play it safe and just select one answer if you want and walk away with partial marking, say 50%, okay? So that's how the uh, negative marking works. Now on test day, you'll get two or three of these uh, depending on the test you get. So you must be prepared to do two or three of them. And you should spend about three minutes per question. Now, the reason I say you should spend two, uh, three minutes per question is because these are not individually timed. In the PT reading section, you have overall time. You need to step your way through the section, through the reading section efficiently and accurately our suggestion from watching thousands and thousands of candidates do this is about three minutes max, okay? Three minutes is a good number to spend on these. Now, 
There's a lot of junk on YouTube and people give the worst possible advice. And some of the bad advice about this particular task, some people say you should skip this task. It's absolutely ridiculous. Please don't skip this task. Just use the three minutes on this task and you may walk away with, you know, full points for it. Skipping tasks like this just doesn't work, so please don't do that. Okay, cool. Now, the text that you will see will be up to 300 words max, okay? That's quite long. That can be up to like four or five short paragraphs. So it's, it's, it's quite different from multiple choice single answer in that the text is almost three times as long, right? Now, critically, you get a question prompt, and the question prompt will say something like this. Which of the following statements are true? Which of the following statements are correct? Which of the following accurately reflect the key facts of the topic include? Something like this. It's really a fact-based reading test, okay? You've got this text over here that's full of all these facts. And you've got these answer options here that some of them will accurately reflect the text. Some of them will contradict, be incorrect, or have information that's not relevant or say something that wasn't mentioned in the text, okay? So this is really what it comes down to. And really, the best way to think about this task is to think about the question prompt saying this, because this is effectively what it's asking you to do. Does the answer option say the same thing as the text? This is really what it's asking you to think about. Does the answer option say the same thing as the text? On that note, let me talk you through the method, right? Because this is critical. Okay, read the question prompt again. Really, the question prompt is asking you, does the answer option, A, B, C, D, or E here, say the same thing as the text? Fine. Before we get to that, before we wanna to start to confirm if that answer option says the same thing as the text, we need to do a little bit of speed reading, right? We need to do a couple of different types of reading in this particular task, but let me take you through step two. So step two, what I want you to do is rapidly and superficially read the text. What I mean by that is the opposite of deep reading. You are not deep reading the text because there is just simply not enough time. Instead, what you're doing is very quickly, and you may not extract much meaning from this, that's superficial reading, very quickly just reading through, okay? You wanna get a sort of basic idea of what the text is about, and you also wanna pick up some of the key words. You wanna sort of prime your brain so you know where the information is because that's in step three when you start to do the matching, okay? Um, here's a really good tip on test day. If you find it difficult to speed read, take your pen, because you do get a pen in the PT, and put it up to the computer screen and read like this very quickly. You're not really taking in all the meaning, you're taking in a bit of meaning, but your eyes, it'll help your eyes go across the screen horizontally and you won't lose yourself in, in the text there, okay? You want to spend, it depends on the text, because the text can be up to 300 words, but you want to spend about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. I'm going to give you quite a bit of time here. I'm going to give you 45 seconds to rapidly and superficially read this text. Cool, well done. All right, so you probably didn't understand the text in detail, in full, that's fine, that's beside the point. 
This is a critical step because it leads us to step number three, okay? What we now want to do is we now want to look at the answer options for the first time. And we want to identify keywords in the answer option and corresponding keywords in the text. Because effectively what's happening is this. We've got this sentence here as an answer option. Somewhere in the text will be the corresponding sentence. It won't be identically written, it won't be written in the exact same words, but there will be some keywords there and some synonyms, and you should be able to locate it, right? And now that we've already done a speed read through the text, we're gonna have a pretty good idea and say, oh yeah, I saw that down the bottom somewhere or something like that, right? So we identify a keyword here in the answer option, we scan read the text, find the corresponding sentence in the text. Okay, this is another critical step. So let's do this. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to find in the text here, this particular sentence. Maybe it wasn't enough time. If you need more time, please pause the video now until you find it. Okay, no problem. All right, let me help you out. There it is there. Okay, so we've got the answer option that says the sound of a dripping tap is caused by water drops hitting surface water. And we found the corresponding part of the text that relates to this answer option. Now we ask ourselves, ourselves? We ask ourselves a question. Does the answer option say the same thing as the text? I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to confirm if this says the same thing as this. Well, hopefully your answer is no, they don't say the same thing. Let's read it again. This says, let me get out my pen here. The sound of a dripping tap is caused by water drops hitting surface water. So we've got some good keywords here like surface and water droplet. The plink plink sound produced by a water droplet hitting a liquid surface is caused not by the droplet itself. These two things, this contradicts the text. So we're gonna leave it. We're gonna move on to the next one and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to identify a keyword here in the answer option and corresponding keyword or keywords in the text. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to try to do that. Again, if you need more time to locate that, please press pause. Otherwise, I'm gonna help you out. It comes right from the top here. Again, I want you to ask yourself, does this answer option say the same thing as this part of the text? You have 15 seconds. The answer, of course, is no. Scientists have worked out how to fix dripping taps, no. Scientists have solved the riddle behind one of the most recognizable and annoying household sounds, the dripping tap. So they've worked out something about the sound, of the, not how to fix dripping taps. You can see how this answer option contradicts what's in the text, therefore we will not select it because what we're essentially doing is asking ourselves, does this say the same thing as this? If no, we leave it. If yes, we select it. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Now, this uh, raises an interesting point, which is a question. Are the answer options in the same order as the text? And as we have seen, the answer is no, they're mixed up. So for example, the first answer option might come from 
down the bottom of the text. And the, and the final answer option might come from the top. So they're, they're not in the same order as the text, which makes it a bit more difficult, to be honest. And really, that means it leads us, uh, that's why it's so critical to identify those keywords and then identify the corresponding keywords in the text, okay? Let's push on, let's keep going with this method because once you've done this, once you've worked out this, this is the key to it. Again, identify a keyword in the answer option and the corresponding keyword in the text. Okay, that, that, that word bubble there is, is really quite a useful word here because as we can see here, you can see that word bubble, small bubble there. I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to confirm whether these two things say the same thing. And the answer is yes. We've come across our first correct answer option. Let's read the answer option. It says, a vibrating air bubble causes the sound of a dripping tap, okay? The plink plink sound produced by a water droplet hitting a liquid surface is caused not by the droplet itself, but by the oscillation of a small bubble of air trapped beneath the water's surface. So here we go, We've got some interesting language here. Oscillation and vibration are synonymous words. And this is where we begin to find the real challenge behind this task. It's not using the identical same words. It's going to use uh, synonyms, right? Okay, so these two do say the same thing. And it's about the air bubble, uh, uh, the trapped air bubble causes that sound. Cool, we found our first correct answer option. Okay, let's keep going, push through to number four. Identify a keyword here, which would obviously be camera. Do you remember seeing the word camera before? Find the corresponding keyword in the text. Okay, you can see it in the second paragraph, at the beginning of the second paragraph, using ultra high speed cameras. Fast, fast, there you go, there's another synonym, high speed, fast cameras, there you go. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. Fast cameras were used to fix dripping taps. Does the answer option here say the same thing as the text? The answer is obviously no, and this, I'm sorry, that was a quite a silly question. Obviously you wouldn't use fast cameras to fix dripping taps, but anyway, it's good practice. The answer there is no, that's beside the point. It's not on topic, it's, it's, it's just wrong, okay? That leads us to our final answer option. Now something interesting has happened here. Has anybody picked up on what's going on? Because remember this is multiple choice, choose multiple answers, more than one. Now we found one so far, we've eliminated the rest, it means the likelihood of this final one being correct is very high, okay? So if this happens to you on test day, you eliminate some, you find one, and you've got one left, either you've made a mistake previously or this one's definitely going to be right, okay? So let's try it out. So. Dishwashing soap can eliminate the sound of a dripping tap. But the key word there would be dishwashing, I think. And we're also probably in that second paragraph about taps. I'll give you 10 seconds to find the corresponding sentence. Okay, hopefully you found it here. Does this answer option say the same thing as that part of the text? I'm only gonna give you 10 seconds to confirm or disconfirm that.
Okay, great. And there's a beautiful synonym here. Here we have can stop the sound, and here we have can eliminate the sound. Okay, you can see this word here, a direct synonym, stop and eliminate. So let's read this. Dishwashing soap can eliminate the sound of a dripping tap. Researchers found that changing the surface tension of the surface, funny sentence, for example, by adding dishwashing soap can stop the sound. The answer is yes. So we found our two correct answers by a process of elimination and by a process of confirming specific parts of a text to the answer option. Let's recap the method. Read the question prompt, right? It's basically going to say something like, does the answer option say the same thing as the text? Step two, you need to rapidly and superficially read the text. Spend about 30 to 40 seconds because you need to identify the main idea of what's going on. You also need to start to identify the key words because then in step three, identifying keywords in the answer option and the corresponding keywords in the text becomes a lot easier, which leads you to step four. You find the specific part of the text, you match it to the answer option, and you ask yourself, do they say the same thing? This is ultimately what multiple choice choose multiple answers is all about, okay? Of course, you need to practice. So if you do need practice, check out e2language.com. It's good, high quality practice material. By the way, we run live classes twice a day for speaking, reading, uh, Mondays are speaking, writings on Tuesday, readings on Wednesday, listenings on Thursday, 65, 79 plus, excellent teachers, new practice questions every day, heaps of practice questions on the website, live one-on-one -on -one tutorials, heaps of cool stuff for you to help you pass your PTE as soon as possible. Okay, so do check that out. All right, guys, now we're going to do some practice. I'm going to put you under three minutes of intense pressure. Imagine you are sitting in the PTE exam. What I really want you to do is apply the method that we've just learned. Don't freak out and start doing something random. Be systematic and methodical about this. Remember, ultimately, what you're doing is confirming whether the answer option says the same thing as a part of the text, okay? So let's practice. You have three minutes starting now.
Okie dokie. That was pretty tough. That was a that was a pretty tough question. It was up there. Okay, so don't feel too bad if you struggled with this one. Remember, practice really is critical for this uh, to get this one right. Nevertheless, let's go through the answer options. If you do need more time, do press pause and go back and keep trying. It's better to spend more time and get the method right and try to answer it rather than just rush through it, okay? All right, let's check out the answers. So, first one was correct. It says, Dodo's, well, actually, let's run through the method again. So we want to read the answer option. It says, which of the following statements are true of Dodo? So it's pretty much asking us which of the answer options uh, say the same thing as the text. Okay, cool. We rapidly and superficially read this, so we get an idea of keywords and the main idea. We're reading about dodos, those weird extinct birds. Okay, now we move to the answer options and we start to do the uh, keyword identification. Dodos were killed out within 100 years of their discovery. The keyword here is century, 100 years. Um, also, the extinction killed out. You can see some synonymous language there. So let's read this. Dodos were killed out within a hundred years of their discovery. Here it says, the extinction of the dodo within less than a century of its discovery called attention, yes. So we've ticked that. If you got A, congratulations, that's well done. That was tough. B. The Nicobar pigeon is the only remaining dodo relative. So the keyword here would have been Nicobar pigeon. You can see it, capital letter N. The closest living relative of the dodo is the Nicobar pigeon. The Nicobar pigeon is the only remaining dodo relative. They say different things. So we're going to skip B. We're going to move to C, which is correct. Dodos were thought by some people to be fictitious creatures. Its extinction was not immediately noticed, and some even considered it to, to be a mythical creature. Fictitious, mythical, they are the synonyms there. These two uh, statements say the same thing. What about D? The last surviving dodo was killed by sailors in 1662. Keyword there would have been 1662. We can match that directly to the text. The text says the last widely accepted sighting of a dodo was in 1662. Um, was it the last of, yeah, no, it doesn't, it just doesn't say that sailors killed the final dodo, okay? It just doesn't say that. What about E? In popular culture, dodos symbolize adventure. Well, they don't. If you read the final sentence and the final clause, uh, a symbol of extinction and obsolescence, right? So they were in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So they don't symbolize adventure, they symbolize extinction. Okay, now let's check out F. Dodos became extinct as a result of disease. Now, was there anywhere in the text where you read something about disease killing out the dodos? Because maybe it just didn't say that. And if it just doesn't say that, it's probably going to be contradictory or wrong, right? Anyway, let's find out where in the text it is. Well, it says, in the following years, the bird was hunted by sailors and invasive species. It doesn't say anything about becoming extinct as a result of disease. The answers, my friends, are A and C. There you go. They are the answers. Feel free to pause the video, have a close read of this, make sure you really understand what's going on. The text is challenging, the answer options are challenging, the synonyms are challenging. It's all really, really tough stuff. Honestly, it's really, really hard. Okay, but nevertheless, if you enjoyed this video or if you are enjoying this video, please click the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. Tell me how many you got right out of uh, two there. Did you get zero, one or two? and feel free to share this with your friends. So do click that subscribe button. We're going to be releasing PT Academic Extended Methods lessons every week. If you're a subscriber, you're going to get a notification, so you'll be the first to view it. Plus, it's pretty cool for us if we can reach 200,000 subscribers, so that's our challenge for the next six months, okay? Awesome. All right, 
That's all from me, guys. If you need further help, ooh, if you need further help with your PT, check out e2language.com. You can sign up for free. Remember that the platform has heaps of practice material. There's live classes happening nearly every day. There's one-on-one -on -one tutorials. There's speaking and writing feedback. Really, it's everything you need for PT success. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.